The Chinese Navy, or the People's Liberation Army Navy, or the PLAN, has seen rapid development over the past 15 or so years, including aircraft carriers, amphibious assault ships, submarines, smaller vessels, and perhaps most obvious, its destroy force. From 2014, the plan has introduced into service the 7,500-ton Type 052 Delta family of air warfare destroyers, and from 2020, the 13,000-ton Type 055 large multi-role destroyers. Even though these very capable new-build ships are being turned out at a rapid rate, the plan has since 2014 continued to modernise older destroyers, including the Type 051 Bravo, Type 052 Bravo and the Sob Remini's. The next in line for upgrades will likely be the Type 051 Charlie class of two air warfare destroyers. But what changes might this class receive so they remain effective over the next 10 or so years? G'day and salutations. Today's briefing, China's Type 051 Charlie air warfare destroyers. How might they be upgraded? This briefing will look at the ship's current configuration, possible upgraded configuration, and likely operational employment post-upgrade. I see an earlier briefing on how the plan has upgraded other destroyers linked below. A shout out to members to please PM me so I can provide additional content to you. And thank you to all those who have subscribed. Now please hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new briefing. Now the Type 051 Charlie was introduced as an interim step to provide a long range area air defense platform until an indigenous phased array SAM system could be fielded on the Type 052 Charlie destroyers. To achieve this, a low risk approach was taken by marrying a proven hull to the in-service long range Russian RIFM SAM system. The class consists of two ships, Plans 115 Shenyang, commissioned in 2006, and Plans 116 Shijiazhuang, commissioned in 2007. They have a length of 155 metres, a beam of 17 metres, and a displacement of just over 7,000 tonnes. They are able to contribute across all domains, but with only a limited anti-submarine warfare capability due to no on-board helicopter. In terms of weapons and radars, the ships are equipped with one HPJ-87 100mm gun, two forward 8-tube revolver-style launchers for their 48 N6 surface-to-air missiles, two triple YU-7 anti-submarine torpedo tubes, two quadruple YJ-83 anti-ship missiles, two Type 730 close-in weapon systems, four aft 8-tube revolver-style launchers for the 48 N6 surface-to-air missiles, a helicopter pad only with no hangar, the 30 N6E Tombstone SAM targeting radar, which note suffers from a blind spot directly forward. The frigate top plate air search radar, type 364 surface search radar, and the mineral ME bandstand over the horizon targeting radar. So what changes might be made that significantly increase capability without the need for major structural modifications? Well, replace the older HPJ-87 100mm gun with the new version introduced on the Type 054 Bravo frigate. Replace the six revolver-style launchers for the 48N6 missiles with the 7 metre length Chinese standard universal VLS loaded with HHQ-9 missiles. Two quadruple slant-launched supersonic 400 plus kilometer range YJ-12s, seen here on the upgraded plan Sob Remedies, to replace the subsonic 180 kilometer range YJ-83s. Two Type 1130 close-in weapon systems to replace the Type 730 version. Replace the Russian frigate top plate 3D air search phase array radar with the domestic Type 382 radar and replace the 30N6E Tombstone 3D Phased Array Target Tracking Radar for the 48N6 missiles with a modified version of the HT233, which is used for the land-based HQ-9 SAM system. This has a similar footprint to the Tombstone and should not require any significant structural changes. So, after refit, the 051 Charlies may be equipped with 
a new HPJ 87 100mm gun, 16 cell VLS forward for HHQ 9s, retain the two triple anti submarine warfare torpedo tubes, two quadruple YJ 12 anti ship missiles, two Type 1130 close in weapon systems, a 32 cell VLS aft for HHQ 9s, still no hangar but retaining the landing pad for helicopters. A modified HT233 targeting radar for the HHQ-9 SAMs. New Type 382 air search radar. Upgraded Type 364 surface search radar. And a new Type 366 over-the-horizon targeting radar, replacing the Mineral ME bandstand radar. In summary, the upgrades suggested in this briefing would require limited structural changes to enhance capability. Should upgraded Type 051 Charlies retain an area air defence role, standardising with the HHQ-9 would make sense and bring significantly better SAM capability than the other upgraded destroyers and current frigates. Upgraded 051 Charlies might be employed together with the Type 052 Deltas, using the Deltas' more capable phased array radars for cooperative engagement while adding a further 48 missiles. This would also bring a significant anti-ship capability by way of the YJ-12s, augmenting the VLS YJ-18s on the modern destroyers and providing a major improvement over the YJ-83 anti-ship capability of the frigates. Of course, the upgrades are not limited to weapon systems. Upgraded sensors and electronics, including the electronic warfare suite, would also make them more survivable and improve logistics by using only domestic systems. It is clear that the plan sees cost benefits in significantly upgrading legacy destroyers, even after around 20 years of service, despite concurrently producing more capable vessels. Because of this approach, the plan will have more destroyers that are capable of operating in a peer-on-peer -peer conflict over the next 10 or so years than they would have if they had not upgraded the ships to the degree they have. It will be interesting to see if the Type 052C destroyers also receive a significant upgrade. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share and don't forget to click the notification button so you don't miss the next briefing. You never know what it'll be about. Happy to take suggestions for briefings from members. Until next time, Violator Cero.